Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres, from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Hello and welcome to another episode of the GSMC Book Review Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah, and I'm going to try to get through my introductory parts of this interview without sneezing. I've been sneezing my head off today. There is something in the air and I am allergic. I mean, I'm allergic to just about everything, which is hyperbole, but I'm allergic to a lot. And I think I've sneezed, this is not hyperbole, at least 40 times in the last two hours. And so that's why I'm a little sniffly. I'm going to try to hopefully make it through this without sneezing. The interview itself was done on Sunday, so that at least I didn't sneeze through. (laughs) So uh, anyway, hi, welcome to the podcast. (laughs) We have an author interview again today. If you listened to last uh, Tuesday, on, last episode on Tuesday the, with my interview with um, Jasmine Silvera and her book, Dancer's Flame, at the end of that interview, I previewed this one and said that I would be speaking with A.M. Wilson about his book, Populous. Let me just give you the description from the back. America, 2151. New York, Washington, Chicago, Los Angeles, all wiped out from nuclear blasts. The new United States of America is centered in Omaha, where the Leviathan Corporation provides a muted, controlled existence for its populace. Synthetic drugs keep them sane. The people are safe, for now, from the threats on the outside. Summoned to the president's office, unlikely hero Thomas Ignatius Stout receives an extraordinary mission. Hunt down and return, dead or alive, the vicious killer responsible for destroying the lives of millions and millions of Americans, Joe Ikowski, who remains a thorn in the government's side. Tom accepts his burden and leads an expedition past Omaha's protective barrier and into the great unknown. That's when Tom's journey really begins. Taking him from Kentucky to Arizona to Mexicali and the Rocky Mountains, Tom finds far more than he is searching for and starts to learn the deeply complicated, disturbing truths of his own identity and a world in which he had only been before scratched the surface. In this poignant page-turner, a novel that blends elements of science fiction, political thrillers, and an Orwellian-style future, rising novelist A. M. Wilson takes readers on a wild ride inside what could become the future of the United States if we ruin ourselves from the inside. It's a novel that will make you think, no matter what you think of America. So that is the description on the back of Populous by A.M. Wilson. We're going to talk a lot about this book in the interview and what went into the writing of it, what Thomas, uh, excuse me, Thomas, what A.M.'s um, inspiration for it was, etc. And this is a very, a very specific niche. Obviously, it's dystopian. It's post-apocalyptic. And these types of books are they're, kind of, they're pretty popular right now. Um, this reminded me actually a lot of some of the older dystopian novels that exist. Um, it reminded me a lot of the ones that we had to read in high school, such as Brave New World or Fahrenheit 451 or um, all the other ones whose names I can't remember. <laughs> we had to read a bunch of them. And so kind of that that bleak future that is just possible enough to make you think, Ugh, ugh, that's terrible. And so it's a very, very interesting book and um, a little dark, a little, a little dreary in its look at the future, but um, gives this picture with this, gives this picture of a world that could be. And this unlikely hero in Thomas Ignatius Stout, which is quite the name, who doesn't seem like he should be the hero of anything, um, but because he's kind of, well, I don't want to give too much away, but we really do see a lot through Tom's eyes. And he 
as as odd a hero as he is, he does give you this this picture of the world as it is. So I don't want to talk too much about this book and give too much away. I would rather let A.M. tell you about it. So let's turn now to that interview with A.M. Wilson about his book, Populate. No, wait, I was just kidding. Before we get to that, I need to remind you that this is a book um, for a giveaway. So if this is your genre, lots of people like this type of genre, this dystopian post-apocalyptic genre, then this is the book for you. And stay tuned. And at the end of the interview, I'll give you instructions for how you can enter to win a copy of Populous. Hi, AM. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me, Sarah. It's a pleasure to be on. It's wonderful to have you. And we are here to talk about your book, Populous. Before we get to the book, though, I would love for my listeners just to get to know you a little bit. So whatever you feel comfortable sharing about yourself would be great. All right, cool. So I was born in Flint, Michigan, um, back in the late 80s. So if Flint was kind of on the, on the decline, any fan of Roger and me will know uh, the, the state of Flint over the last several decades. Um, and my parents had a, had a split. So, um, I mentioned this just because I've always been kind of a really avid writer. Um, and it was born from my parents' divorce. My mom's a English teacher. My dad's a philosophy teacher. So my mom always encouraged me to write out everything that I was feeling about the, specifically about the divorce. And later it turned into stories and um, I remember I would build these really elaborate worlds with Legos and the really elaborate worlds have turned into novels. So um, it's, it's a fun, it's a fun arc. Um, but after Flint, I moved to a little farm town called Carson city. Uh, it's got 1100 people in it. It's the kind of town that anytime somebody's born, you actually see the ticker rise. Um, <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you know, I spent my summers working for beer money, um, on, on a farm, even when I was way too young to be drinking beer. Um, but we would, you know, sit alongside of a, a cornfield just in case somebody found out about it and we needed to run. So, um, and then everything speeds up once I get to college and I leave Carson city and, you know, I've, I've worked for the Associated Press in Argentina. I spent time in Spain. I've lived in Kentucky and Indiana. When I lived in Kentucky, actually, I was working for uh, the Kentucky Democratic Party in 2008 when Obama was running. So that was a really interesting experience. Um, I've never actually encountered racism um, in that way before, uh, like kind of unabashed, openly, like mm -hmm. I'm racist kind of way. Mm -hmm. um, it's a really eye-opening. And now I live out in Silicon Valley or... Um, yeah, I work for a tech company. So Okay, thank you for that. So this is your debut novel, is that correct? That is correct. Okay, and it's called Populous. So tell us a little bit about the book. So Populous is set in the year 2151, uh, where the United States is it's gone. Um, it suffered a, a series of nuclear explosions. And what is left is basically one city, Omaha, that's run by one company, the Leviathan Corporation. Uh, and they kind of oversee all daily aspects of life in, Levi in, in Omaha. So that goes to, you know, making sure that the populace is uh, well managed through synthetic drugs uh, to making sure that, you know, the, the powers to be are, are also well managed in their own kind of way, um, which is not, uh, I mean, kind of tellingly also through synthetic drugs. So everybody's on something in the book. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, and there's uh, the hero, Tom. He, he works for the Leviathan Corporation. He's one of the lucky ones to actually have like a, a white collar job. And he is asked, to go out on a mission to find a person who had just committed a terrorist attack, Joe Wachowski. And that's, that's where the story really takes off. Right. Yeah, and he's asked to go out on this mission. Uh, we, we, we don't really know Tom at this point. Um, we, we, we've gotten to know him a little bit, but he's asked to go out on this mission and you're kind of thinking, okay, I, I have absolutely no idea what qualifications this man has for anything. <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, makes it a little interesting, but it leads to, um, I mean, it, it makes sense later. So what was your inspiration for the story? Um, 
you know, my my inspiration, there were a lot of uh, pieces of art and literature that really inspired me a lot. Um, I really loved, um, one of the biggest inspirations to it is actually, oddly enough, Brian Jacquez novels, um, Redwall novels, mm-hmm. kind of these adventure stories, you know, really true adventure stories. But um, I'm a big John Steinbeck fan, and uh, that went into the piece a lot. And so did, like, a lot of contemporary fiction, like The Road, um, or by Cormac McCarthy or a lot of David Foster Wallace pieces. I mean, you you mentioned like having kind of it all makes sense after a while. I remember reading Infinite Jest and not having a clue what was going on until page 680. Oh, and then geez. like everything crystallized, right? And I was like, oh my God, there are 300 more pages of this. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. It really but reminded it, me a lot of some of the books that uh, we had to read in high school, like um, uh now I can't think of any of them. Fahrenheit 451, um, the one with Big right. Brother, all you know, those that with this kind of right. dystopian right. future. Yeah, and and I mean, my the biggest influence in the book by far, um, in terms of literary world, is um, Brave New World, because I I remember reading that, and I was in college, and I was so debilitated by it, I couldn't like leave my bed for like a week and a half. Oh wow! And it was. It was, yeah, it was just like, I just couldn't, it was such a perfectly created universe that I couldn't think of a way for it not to exist in the future. And it really like humbled me and like made me like freaked out and really like incredibly engaged in this really powerful way. Like I was like, wow, like if I could write a book like that, Mm -hmm. that actually impacts people in that way, then it would be amazing. Um, And, and, you know, I think the reason why Brave New World impacted me so much is because I came from Flint and I saw this really powerful, like, collapse of a city. And, you know, as I've traveled around, I've lived in Chicago and I've lived in St. Louis and quite a few places at this point, I've seen the same thing in in multiple cities, just in, in, like, certain sections of a city. It's like, you know, I, I can't remember who... Who, who coined the, the phrase that the future is already here, it's just not evenly distributed? Well, I, I think that's true both for the positives, which we often focus on, but it's also true for the negatives, right? Like, there's basically third world country conditions in places like Flint or the south side of Chicago or the north side of St. Louis. And I used to have to drive through that every day in, in St. Louis, and there just came this point where I said why do we treat people like this and um, I started writing okay thank you um talk a little bit about your main character Tom what is it about him that you think might resonate with readers yeah Tom's a tough one you know my my brother called me up the other day and he said I really didn't like your book (laughs) 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 and I said oh yeah why is that he's like I just didn't like Tom I just couldn't get behind Tom and that's that's actually that's feedback that I've gotten. It's one of those weird things where you either really enjoy it the way it is, or you don't enjoy it the way it is. He's not a he's not a typical hero. Right. Like if you're looking for a Sylvester Stallone to be strapped with ammo and like figure out everything in thirty seconds and just like go take on the world, that's, that's not Tom. Tom is really inspired by um, Fight Club. Actually, the the protagonist for Fight Club is this really mousy, meek, timid person who is so timid and meek that he creates an alter ego to try to handle the world and adjust to the world. And I didn't, um, I, I I don't, I think I'm about I'm about to spoil Fight Club, but I didn't create a spit split personality right. for Tom. Um, instead, I I wanted to have someone who embodied the world that was uh, a character people could pour themselves into. He was like a blank slate in the same way that Fight Club's narrator is a blank slate. You don't even get a name for the narrator in Fight Club. And I thought that was a brilliant move liter- in, in literature. And so I wanted, I wanted to have a character who people could um, live through um, and experience the book through because although it's set in 2151, it's, it's really um, very uh, near to, to what we experience, I think, on an everyday basis. And so um, 
you know, while what, what's been interesting to me, though, is feedback about Tom, I think, embodies what people want to see from themselves. And mm-hmm. so it's like my brother wants to be like Rambo a little bit. And um, I love my brother. And I think he, you know, he's, he's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful father and, and husband and, and brother. But he's not Rambo. <laughs> <laughs> And we shouldn't, and I don't even think we should have Rambo. So like in terms of a literary like hero, I don't, I don't want to write a Rambo. I want to write somebody who experiences life uh, in a way that, that everybody does, but can find beauty in it and can find hope and can become a leader. Um, And, and that's, that's what I tried to do with Tom. Yeah. And I think, I think you did that well. I mean, Tom is a little odd. I mean, he's, he's been, medicated his whole life like everyone in this world and so he sees he starts seeing things differently as he goes on his mission and um yeah and because he's he's such a blank slate it is a little hard to get behind him at times but at the same time you really are able to put yourself into his shoes and see things as he's seeing them right and it's such a weird world right yeah it's it's is that it's almost like I needed to have a center of gravity for everything. Like I couldn't make Tom weird too. <laughs> then, the whole, <laughs> then the whole universe would have spun off its axis. So hopefully this first segment has given you a bit better of an introduction to Populous by A.M. Wilson. We do have to take a quick break, but when we come back, we'll be talking more about this world that he's created, more about the characters and um, just everything that went into creating this book. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. Do you want to be healthier, yet you just don't know what to do? All these shows telling you this and that, but nothing seems to work. Well, listen close. Golden State Media Concepts has got something great for you. The health and wellness podcast dedicated to workout trends, healthy eating habits, diet, and everything about healthy living. Join us in our banters as we help you not just live life to the fullest, but live it to the healthiest. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. I am speaking this episode with author A.M. Wilson about his post-apocalyptic um, dystopian novel, Populous. So let's go ahead and get back to that interview with A.M. Well, uh, you've talked a little bit about this in terms of where you grew up, etc., but are there um, any autobiographical elements in the story or any of the characters? Uh, there definitely are a lot of, uh, you know, there's a lot of... There are a lot of moments that are in there that I, I, I mean, there are things. So as I, as I got older, the story is, is kind of a coming of age story too, a little bit. And as I've, for, for Tom, who, who was heavily medicated when I was a kid, I remember, um, you know, basically my mom was a single parent in, in Michigan, uh, in Flint. So, uh, we moved when there was a, a shooting right on the same block uh, and a man shot off a woman's foot with a shotgun oh. on New Year's Eve. I'm not entirely sure what the circumstances were around there. Maybe they were celebrating and it was an accident. I really don't know. But it was a point where my mom said, I'm a single mom. This neighborhood is getting more dangerous. There's graffiti down the street. We got to move. And so we moved back to her hometown, which is the little uh, Carson City, Michigan. And the way she coped with the world, um, and I think – you know, first it began as a recommendation from a psychologist and then it turned into just she could not live without it was through medication, through through Prozac or Zoloft or whatever. And, and I remember not really understanding or knowing what were real feelings and what were synthetic feelings. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and the first time that I was, I think I was 13 or 12 or something, I can't really remember, I was an early teen, and I was like all anxious about a girl that I liked and I thought we were going to start dating. And, you know, it was very like childish, but she, she, the girl basically like started seeing another guy who was kind of rough around the edges and I think he could drive. So, you know, I don't really blame her or whatever, <laughs> but I, I started to have, 
I started to have anxiety about it. And uh, so so I, I think I had like an anxiety attack over something kind of so silly. But like my mom's response was to try to give me medication for it, right? And and that I think is increasingly becoming normal. Mm-hmm. And and it's it's we live in a world where I think we don't stop ourselves from saying, "Wow, everything is kind of absurd," and and that's why I need medication. Um, I remember the first time that I started like a genuine day job. I was I was blown away that people actually did this for like 30 years <laughs> I, was like, I was like wow like i can't believe that like you know you go to work and you know you you talk about stuff that seems kind of banal and and then you go home and you watch tv so that you can talk about it with coworkers the next day like all of this was so strange to me I don't know. I just I, I wanted to ask in the, in the book um, whether or not we we should be um, living this way. But I don't really have the, this is the this is the tragedy I think of the book is I don't really have good answers for otherwise. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, there are lots of autobiographical elements into it. Um, you know, from from nights at at nightclubs where I I just was dancing without knowing where my limbs would go to you know, trips on a boat. My dad has a sailboat, which is actually called Boxer. So a boxeador is a uh, Spanish for boxer, which he got a big kick out of. And, uh, you know, at, at one point there was reams of stuff about sailing in the book. And there was lots of, um, information about like time travel and stuff. I did all this research on physics and, and a lot of it was taken out because I, I think largely I, I thought it was kind of, um, silly but uh but i think uh i think the heart of our heart of the autobiography and the heart of my journey kind of to all these different places uh, is still in the book okay and you, you actually segued nicely into my next question you mentioned doing research um what other kinds of research did you do for the book um so the book i really spent a lot of time looking <laughs> I had maps of the country, which just sounds funny, but I did a lot of research on, on kind of the shape of the country. Mm-hmm. And and then I, I wanted to get inside the heads of people in like a really profound way. So there, I, there was lots of research that I did in terms of, you know, where is Yuma, Arizona, and where is Mexicali, and and how are they related, and what's the history of each, and and do I want to put those in the novel, and what does Omaha actually look like? Why would I want to pick that? So you know, I, I've been to Omaha a couple times. Um, you know, what what does it even look like to drive across the country, like in that way? How do, how does it look to drive west across the Rockies? You know, that kind of thing really painted the the book uh the the book i wanted to write a book about america um and and i wanted to write a book that was cohesive about america and i had this kind of you know coming from flint michigan which was really very industrial abandoned factories a lot of inner city and urban problems and just driving an hour and a half to Carson City, Michigan, which is, you know, farm country, cornfields and and alfalfa. And there are Amish folks who live there who ride horse and buggies to the to the grocery store is so dramatically different that there's there in America. What's what's uniquely American, I think, is that we have and maybe it's not that uniquely American, uh, but. But I think I think the divide that we have between the rural and the urban is super stark. Um, and, you know, it was often commented on when I first moved to Carson City. Uh, and after after some time, I realized how everybody was kind of the same. It's just that the stories that we tell each other are kind of different. It's like, well, I, I won't get along with urban kids because I'm a, I'm a country boy and people would say this, you know, I'm a country boy. So they were afraid to go to college. Right. And they were afraid to like get a higher education because they had always grown up in the country and mm-hmm. and they really liked it there. And I, I thought that was uh, kind of, 
kind of bad for them because they 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 would run out of runway at some point. They'd run out of, of the ability to, to really benefit themselves. And conversely, like I think there's a beauty in the peace and serenity and and there's a kind of freedom in the country where, you know, there was only one cop for the entire for the entire area of like Montcalm County, which is gigantic. Mm-hmm. And and it allowed us to, to really be kind of stupid and act like kids and not get these terrible repercussions to it. So I, when, when urban folks call country people backwards, some of that's true. There was a hell of a lot of racism. Sorry for swearing. Mm, um, but okay. there was a heck of a lot of racism in, in the countryside that wasn't in the urban city, or at least not in the same, same way. And there was a, a, a lot of freedom in the countryside that I think the urban side didn't really understand. So in terms of research, I just really tried to understand America and what was going on in America. And I thought I had a good grip on it. I started this book four years ago, and then uh, President Trump got elected, and I said, holy crap, how did I get some of this closer to reality than I than I had hoped I would have. <laughs> right. Um, and and I think I should finish this. So. Okay. Thank you. Um, so it is a, a post-apocalyptic kind of dystopian novel set in a not too distant future. Um, talk a little bit about the world building then that you, you you've talked a little bit about it already, but um, how did you create this world? Yeah, I I really tried to. So I, I, I had some really great editors along the way too. So I don't want to underestimate, you know, the, the, the book that came out was the, I think the sixth or seventh or maybe more revision on what originally was there and getting, getting the details right. And, and just enough detail to allow folks to fill in the gaps, but not enough detail that it's, uh, bogs the reader down and slows them down in the pacing I think is a really hard balance to strike and it took a lot of people telling me that my first attempts weren't very good <laughs> okay. <laughs> to, to, get that, to get that balance right a lot of a lot of folks when they're asked to predict the future they'll try to come up with things that they think will be in the future like flying cars or or um, you know everybody everybody all the time making a universal income or something. So the, the, the best way I think is to kind of flip the question on its head and to ask yourself, what don't you think will change, right? What will we still have in the future rather than what, what will be new in the future? Um, and so what I, what I think we'll still have is people who are kind of in, in, desperate straits who really for no other reason than just kind of the way that the world is they don't really want to think about um, their lives very much and they don't want to like live outside of them too much so I think that that creates an interesting reality um, and and one that I wanted to explore so that's that's where populace came in it was you know what do we how do how do we, how do we motivate people how do we get people to like realize the absurdity of everything but also march towards a, a better tomorrow i think some things are 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 great and some things are productive and and lord knows i i can't live my life without being distracted um and i, I enjoy distractions too so, and, and like entertainment's fun and all good, um, but there are some things that I think are, are dangerous and um, I tried to highlight those. So, did I answer your question? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just talked, you know, kind of the process of how you went into building this world. So that's really, you, the, your answer is great because you know the process better than anyone else. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's something that is, it's, I think, something that I think populist does well, and I think it's something that it, it was really difficult to do, especially when, you know, there's not a protagonist in Tom who is this, you know, stand-up and charismatic and, like, bang-his-chest type. 
I really needed to lean on the world to carry the story Mm -hmm. um, in a lot of ways. And and that was, uh, that was something that I worked really hard at getting right. So all the pieces had to fit together. um, And, and yeah. Okay. And I'm going to jump in here once more so we can take our second break of the podcast. When we come back, we'll be talking a little bit about what AM is working on now, new projects that he has going, um, possible sequel, possible prequel for Populous. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and my interview with author A.M. Wilson about his debut novel, Populous. So let's go ahead and get to that interview. So what's next? Are you working on another book? I, I am. Um, I'm working on a couple of books. I kind of started started a couple and then stopped and then started and then stopped. Uh, it's been it's been really nice because a lot of folks who've read the uh, read Populous have asked for a sequel, which is kind of funny. It's like, hey, this is great. Now, what's your what's your next book? <laughs> right, okay. right. Calm, calm down. <laughs> 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 um, so I have started a sequel, um, and and I. Yeah, it's very early stages for that. Uh, I just try to pick out major themes, and, and I'm starting to try to just write major themes and, and around that. And you know, I try to pick one or two books as, as a mate or one or two pieces of the literature as like a major influence. And I really want to. One of my dad's my dad's favorite work in Shakespeare is is King Lear, mm-hmm. which is a depressing book yeah. by itself. <laughs> Um, but you know, my dad is getting older and my wife's dad is getting older and it's kind of, we're getting older. And so I think there's, there's like this, this whole area that I haven't yet explored in terms of what is, what is next, what is beyond. And I think, uh, I think I'm going to start to kind of put that together. I also, I really want to do something that's fun and light as much as I can, because just, you know, uh, populous. It was a little bleak in parts, and uh, so I, I started. Actually, I started a, a novel that's um, it's kind of a take on Cyrano de Bergerac, but uh, in terms of the internet and you know this 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 person with a huge nose uses the internet to hide his disfigurement um, and 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 talk to all these these women. And uh, it's 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 very much like a romantic comedy, and it's very autobiographical in a lot of ways. I ha- I've had a series. My my relationship history is essentially I had a bunch of bad relationships, and then I stopped dating, and then I met my wife. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> and so I, I think uh, I think that would just be fun. I think that'd be lighthearted. Um, and and I I actually I started a prequel while I was writing Populous for Populous. And I just wanted to create this huge, like, spasmatic world of, of different characters and scenes and, and just have it be gigantic and unruly and, and, and not tightly controlled at all. And it was, um, it's already actually as long as Populous uh, turned out to be, and it's only about halfway through. Oh, so, wow. Um, 
Yeah, but I'm I'm suffering from this issue where I think it's a little too unruly, mm-hmm. <laughs> so I gotta I gotta start to trim the trim the bushes on that one. Right. Um, but I want it I wanted it to be like this big loud exclamation point um, on, on on what the world is today. So mm-hmm. okay, yeah, I think there's a lot of a lot of information that you could put into a prequel. Because you do, we do just kind of get dropped into this world, and we get some of that backstory. But um, yeah, I can see where you'd want to explore that. You mentioned that you started writing. Your mom encouraged you to write. Um, did you um, going from that? Did you want to make it a career, or did you kind of come upon that later in life? How did that work? Um, that's a well. That's a great question. Um, and, and can I can I just quickly ask you? Did you like the book? Just out of curiosity, um, what do you think? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, no and yes. <laughs> like, it's depressing. Um, that's fair. So this <laughs> this isn't my favorite genre, um, okay. because it is kind of that like stark, depressing uh, possible reality that we don't really yeah. want to think about. Um, but you have a really great way of writing, and I I love the way you put words together. And um, it was very interesting to kind of see Tom's progression as he moved through um, all of the all of the situations that he had to had to move through. So, um, it, yeah, not the genre necessarily, but uh, I think you did a great job with the writing and with the storytelling and creating this world. Thank you. Yeah, that's that's. I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> The woman who uh, created the book cover, uh, I said, well, would you recommend it to others? And she said, if they're interested in that kind of book. <laughs> right, right. And, you know, some people some people love this this type of story. You know, they, they and right. like you mentioned with, with Cormac McCarthy and Brave New World, um, you know, some people really like to feel that uncomfortableness of this type of book. So, yeah, it's definitely a, right. a, a genre that people get into. Yeah, it's it's um, it's insistingly present, but I, I you know, I, I think what um, I think it doesn't have enough humor to be. Um, I think it needed more. Well, I think the world demanded the level of humor that's in the book, but mm-hmm. I think uh, I think you know there there needs to be um, a few more bits of levity. But um, no, it's cool. I'm glad. Thank you for reading it. I really appreciate it. Um, and I appreciate the the honest appraisal. Um, it's it's always good to hear. So, uh, I'm sorry, I've totally forgotten your question. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about um, writing as a career, or you know how you came upon writing fiction. Right. So I, um, so I actually started. So I, I did. I, I've always been kind of obsessed with building worlds, and to the extent where I used to. Uh, asked for huge poster paper and markers so I could just draw like cities and and worlds and and have all these people in them and imagine what the life of the shopkeeper was like and how that interplayed with like a main character and stuff like that. So I always always loved to do that. But I actually, when I graduated from high school, I had, um, I scored a perfect score in um, my ACTs for math and science and I was likely going to be an engineer. Um, but this was just a couple of years after September 11th happened. And I said the, the most important and difficult problems of today are not, are not, they're, they aren't technical problems, right? You can, we can, we can all get in a room and we can measure something and we can figure something out and we can kind of do the math behind it. And we, essentially the answers there are already known in a lot of ways, right? But the most difficult and complicated problems of today are, are problems among humans, right? And so I, I said, I don't really want to focus on uh, just math and technical issues. I want to focus on uh, how do we solve problems of human beings and people. And so I became a political organizer and I was a poli sci major and I worked for um, a mayor, um, and I found that I really do not like politics. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just deeply dislike politicians, to be honest. I, I think that it's a, um, 
it's just not not for me and it's it's kind of concerning in a way too because you know a lot of a lot of stuff that can benefit people needs to come from from politicians but then there's this other avenue which is culture and i think that you know i've my like i mentioned my my mom was a english teacher my dad was a philosophy professor and i've seen the ability and i've felt the ability for books to really change lives in fact there have been studies that show that books more than any other form um, as you read them they kind of rewire your brain to be more empathetic Mm. and i I think that that's um magical in a way And, and that's something that very few things can touch and so uh, I decided to to write and I have made writing into a career um, I've, I've done it a lot um, between you know I was I worked for the Associated Press in Argentina I've, I've been a, a writer in various corporate um, roles and it's it's I turned a corner actually with populace in terms of writing I, I definitely when I started I was not as good of a writer as when I ended. And there's, I found my voice too with the book. Um, So I I discovered both how I think I want to write and, and how, and how it's most comfortable for me. And I I mean, that's, that's something that has been invaluable. So um, yeah, I've turned it into a profession and, and uh, it was, it's been really nice because even people who, who don't like the book necessarily, they'll say, you know, you're an incredible writer. And if you keep doing this, like, you'll be a really incredible writer. Um, but I didn't like the book. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, to, sorry to say, I didn't like the book. <laughs> well, you did, you did choose a, a rather uh, difficult genre for your first, your first novel. Yeah. So. I was super ambitious with the book. I really was. I, well, I wanted to create something that was, like uh, a, a, a fan of like 1980s action movies like Predator would enjoy it just as much of, uh, as a fan of uh, high literature and you could get like all of the Greek references and stuff in it. And I don't know why I decided to do that with my first <laughs> <laughs> I would never do that again. Um, but it was, uh, it was a lot of learning too. Absolutely. So. And I'm jumping in here one more time to take our final break of the podcast, but stay tuned for the conclusion to this interview. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. Want to know the latest and hottest music hidden the airwaves? Don't be left out. Listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Music Podcast. Keith keeps you on the loop with everything you need to know from pop, rock, hip hop, and the top 40. And we'll throw in news of your favorite artists, concert and tour dates, and so much more. Listen no further because this is the gold standard in music podcast. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and the conclusion of my interview with author A.M. Wilson about his debut novel, Populous. So throughout that learning process then, um, would you have advice for um, aspiring authors? You know, I would, I think the most important, I think I have two pieces of advice. The the most important piece of advice is to be patient with yourself. Um, I think it's really easy to take something that you create and to say this isn't as good and it will never be as good. Uh, and while the, as, as the books that you love, uh, but while the first may be true, the second one isn't necessarily true. Uh, it's just kind of a jump that we make, right? It, it, it's probably not as good as, you know, a Cormac McCarthy novel or whatever on the first go, but that's okay because if you work on it and you and you figure out what you're trying to say and you find your voice in it, then it, then it could be as good. Um, and and it just logging those hours and just you know day after day after day, I think is super important. So that's my advice: is just to to be patient with yourself and to really understand that it's a process. 
and it's a it's a it's an often painful process, um, which comes into my second form of advice, which you know is to be patient with other people <laughs> because the feedback that you get is um, you know I remember being anxious and excited when I finished this uh, the first draft and I gave it to my wife to read. And my wife is not a, a literature, high literature fan, but she, you know, she's, she's awesome and, and a great wife. And she read the whole thing. And I said, <laughs> I said, what'd you think? And she said, verbatim, you have a lot of words <laughs> in some places and not enough words in other places. <laughs> <laughs> and, she, and she's a very articulate lady, like has a master's degree, a great school, like all that. But she just was trying to be so delicate, right? right. And so gentle with her feedback. Uh, and and it was clear that it was, she did not enjoy the experience. Right. So I, I think, um, but out of that came wisdom too, right? What she was trying to say was, uh, hey, you, when you're trying to build this world, think about the details that you want to include uh, and leave some out mm-hmm. because it'll be better and include a few more in other places and, and you'll find kind of the right touch there. And and it was the right thing that I needed to hear. But the delivery was uh, <laughs> not the best. <laughs> right. right. That's, well, well, she she was honest. That's not <laughs> he's, um... Yeah, it's good. <laughs> it's good. So, um, um, when you read, do you have favorite authors or genres? I, you know, I try I try really hard to just read anything that is good, and I know it's like a <laughs> such a funny thing, <laughs> funny response to that question. But I really, I really. Um, I try to mix it up a lot. So right now I'm actually reading the three body problem, uh, those three books. Um, I'm, I'm on the second one of those three books, but every year I try to read the book that reads the man, that wins the man Booker prize. I try to read a book that is off the you know, top 100 books that you should read. I, I try to read science fiction books because, uh, you know, I, I'm writing in this genre, um, but I, I don't necessarily love science fiction. I, I just love, I love when I can forget what I'm reading and I can forget that it's words on a page and, and it just becomes these people who are speaking to me and the scene that I'm, that I would never be privy to, but I, I'm, I'm a part of, and I think literature does that exceptionally well. And literature is great because it also takes really big risks that other forms of media just can't. Right. I, I, I think that it's um, it's the kind of thing that is. Uh, I just you know I, I try to I try to read um, a classic and a, and, a, and a great one. So I mean I could list off my favorite writers um, like Kurt Vonnegut and John Steinbeck and um, and on. But I've been reading so many various things recently. You know I, I've been reading a lot of Thomas Pynchon and I've been reading you know David Foster Wallace and I just want. I think it's uh, the way that I view it is a little bit like um, Keith Richards, who, who said, you know, the Rolling Stones guitarist. Mm-hmm. He said, Every, everything that you hear goes into what you play. And so I viewed it as like everything that I read will go into how I write. And I just want to have the most diverse and like kind of um, the, I want to be able to draw from the most sources and the most voices and the most styles possible. Um, and I think that that's because I don't believe that there's one singular, um, one singular kind of voice that, that is beautiful and that works all the time. But I think, I think you can have a, a set of voices that are, that are beautiful and work and, and they work together and creates this harmony. Um, and so, um, so yeah, maybe one day I'll challenge myself though and just try to keep it straight and do one one thing the whole time <laughs> well where's the fun know. in that <laughs> yeah yeah exactly uh where can people find you on the internet do you have social media or a website yep uh so amwideawake.com is probably the best place okay yeah am am wide awake i i was i'm a huge bright eyes fan um uh and so that's this is 
the album, his, well, I'm a huge fan of his album, I'm Wide Awake, It's Morning. And so uh, AM being morning and, and my name, I just couldn't help myself. I, I just had to, I had to play on the words there. Okay. I'm Wide Awake, It's Morning. Nice. So AM Wide Awake. All right. Thank yeah. you. Is there anything that we haven't covered as we're wrapping things up that you would like for people to know about your writing, about this book, about just anything that we haven't talked about? I think the book makes people uncomfortable, but I think that's kind of the point of the book. Mm -hmm. So I, I encourage folks to check it out, um, to, to, to take it in. And I hope that even if it makes folks uncomfortable, that they persist with it and that they, they, they find some, some kind of pro in it that they really enjoy. Um, but but I think, I think the reason why it makes folks uncomfortable too is because, um, you know, it's, it's like my brother, he can see himself in the book. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think the the things that he sees in himself are, are, um, scary. And so it's good to be frightened every once in a while. (laughs) (laughs) I guess that's what I'd say. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Um, thank you for taking the time out of your weekend to talk to me. I really appreciate it. And, um, talking about your book, which is Populous. Thank you so much for being a guest on the podcast. Thank you so much, Sarah, for having me on. I've really enjoyed it. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. I want to once again thank my guest, author A.M. Wilson, for joining me, for taking some time out of his weekend to join me to talk about his debut novel, Populous. And I also want to apologize for my totally awkward answer when he asked me what I thought of the book. You can tell that I'm used to being the one that asks the questions, not the one that gets asked the questions. And so I'm not great at, you know, just like thinking on my feet. So I, when I said it's depressing, I didn't, it's not that I mean, obviously, it's a depressing topic. Anything apocalyptic and uh, dystopian tends to be a little on the dreary side. But I don't mean to say that this is a book without value, or that this is a book that I would never read um, this genre again, or that I wouldn't read anything else by A.M. As I said, he, uh, I love his writing. Um, I love the way he puts words together. The the genre isn't necessarily one of my favorites. Um, it's it's definitely not escapist reading, let's put it that way, but it is a genre that definitely has a place in um, in literature, you know, because it, it helps us to look at what unfortunately could be. It helps us to imagine um, our place in a world like that, especially through the eyes of a character who is kind of a blank slate like Tom is. So I didn't, come across as well as I would have liked when I answered that question. So uh, as I said, it's not my favorite genre, but it's very, very well written. It is very interesting. It sucks you into the story. There are um, a lot of good things about this novel. So just because it's not necessarily my top favorite genre ever, and it's not really escapist reading does not mean that um, it's not a good book and it's very well written like I said and um, has a lot to recommend it so just wanted to get that out there and, and kind of uh, give a better answer than the one I gave during the interview at any rate if you are interested in reading Populous if you're not scared off after all of this talk about um, you know AM's brother saying he hated it <laughs> and all of that good stuff don't be scared it's it's not it's not it's not a bad book. It's a good book. And you could be one of those people who loves this genre. And that that is great. So if this is something that you are interested in reading, you are in luck because I have three copies to give away. So all you need to do is just go to our Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram page and comment on the post with episode 81. That is episode 81 interview with A.M. Wilson. Just make a quick comment and you will be entered to win a copy of Populous. So So that giveaway will go through May, let's see, um, what is this weekend? The 13th, the 12th. So that (laughs) this will go through May 19th with winners announced on the 21st. Yes, that is correct. So you have until May 19th to go onto Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram and comment on episode 81, interview with A.M. Wilson for a chance to win Populous. Thank you so much to A.M. for joining me. Thank you, as always, to you, my listeners, for joining me, for going on these book adventures with me and with the authors that um, come to the podcast. I appreciate all of you. 
I hope that you will join me again on Tuesday when I am interviewing author Mike Nemeth about his book, The Undiscovered Country. And I hope that you will now take some time and go out and get lost in a good book. Thanks. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program